Your game's too loud. Your mic is too loud. I can't even hear your team. Oh my gosh, please unmute your mic. These are all things that as a streamer, you've probably heard. And honestly, finding a solution ahead of time is probably what you should be doing to mitigate all of this that you might have in chat, to give your audience the best experience possible and to make your life a little easier for troubleshooting. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can take control of your audio setup today. Make it to where when you speak Speak, your game and music gets quieter. Make sure that you are EQing your voice effectively and using filters to improve the quality of your microphone or to make it sure that you don't peak and blow out your microphone because it just sounds gross. That's disgusting! Let's talk about how we can fix those. All of that inside OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Talking about how we can use this everywhere, guys. So, uh... Let's get into it. For this video, by the way, we're going to do everything in OBS, but all of this applies to Streamlabs OBS and Streamlabs Desktop. Just know that I'm going to show you in OBS, apply the skills there. The very first tip we're going to talk about is audio ducking. And I know that might kind of sound weird, audio ducking. But the truth is audio ducking is a huge benefit if you learn how to use it effectively. So the way we're going to do this and show you how it works is I'm actually going to pull up some music to simulate if we were playing a game just so that we can have a controlled environment. I'm going to play stream beats from Harris and just kind of have those playing in the background. But what you might notice if you're keen eyed, you don't see actually anything music related from my faders. So I'm going to go ahead and add that source so that we can separate things and see it. Again, apply this to your gameplay or whatever audio source you have. And we're going to talk about how it's effective. When you speak, it gets softer. That's what she said. <laughs> So I'm going to add a source. We're going to choose audio output. In this case, I'm going to say music and I actually have uh, the wave software and I have it separated out to wavelink music. So when I click OK, you can go ahead and see that it's going to pop up into this music channel. And let me turn it down a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. It's probably overpowering my voice right now. Now it's probably around negative 20, so that's fine. So the point of what happens is maybe you want to make sure that as you speak, it goes down and it's at a nice level to hear. And so this sounds cool with lo-fi in the background, but it can be overpowering at times, especially if I speak softer, it might not, it's just gonna overtake it. So whatever the case. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that music source. We can either click it in sources or even in the fader and we're gonna click filters. So in here, it's going to say audio filters, and I'm going to move it to the side so that we can see the faders as well as the filters and see what happens. We're going to add a compressor and you would think a compressor, what a compressor really is, is actually to smush your highs and your lows together so that when you speak softer, it's still loud enough to be heard. But in this case, we're using it for its built-in function called sidechain slash ducking source. For this, we're gonna choose the source you want to always be heard. In this case, our microphone. So I'm just gonna choose this box and I have a bunch of sources here. We're just gonna choose mic. And now that I chose mic, you can instantly see that it's already kind of set up. When I speak, things are gonna get softer from the fader. So I'm going to stop for a second and see what it tops out at. So it's bouncing around this negative 17 or so, but when I speak, it goes down to around negative 25. So here's the adjustments that you need to make. The ratio, I would go ahead and increase this to about 15. It's not really gonna make too much of a difference, but this is in my testing where I found some really good stuff. The threshold is the last thing I want to adjust. Go ahead and take your attack and put it at about 100 milliseconds and maybe the release around 400 or more. What these do is the attack is how quick the filter works it turns on so it's about a tenth of a second and then it'll take four tenths of a second to get back to its normal volume so it'll kind of scoop down and then it'll go back up and it has kind of a ramping effect the next piece is the threshold. The threshold is how effective you want it to be. So the lower you go on the threshold, the lower the volume will go when you talk. So if you'll go ahead and see, as I turn this down and continue talking, you can see it's down all the way to negative 40 now. But when I stop talking, it jumps back up to negative 17. And hopefully you can hear that on your end. Imagine if you're using it for your game sounds. If you're using it on your game sounds, it's immediately going to tank and then come back up. I'm gonna go ahead and max out the volume on that. That track is at full volume right now, and as I talk, it drops down to negative 25, and as I stop, 
it's back up to full volume, but when I talk, it drops back down. Really useful feature. It's great to put on audio sources that you know want to be affected by your voice. And obviously you can add this to any audio source and allow those to stick out. So really awesome piece right here. You can be as, you know, you can be as aggressive or not as aggressive, whatever the case. Use this to your advantage. All right, for this example, I've turned off all of the filters on my microphone and we're gonna do it from scratch. Normally I adjust them inside Wavelink, but we're gonna talk about how I would adjust it inside OBS to improve the sound of this microphone. So number one, we're gonna right click microphone either here or wherever it is, and we're gonna go to filters. And you're gonna see that I have a limiter on. We're gonna delete that one and we'll talk about them in order. So number one, we're gonna add very first, we're gonna add a noise suppression. And there's so many ways that you can say which one you should use or not use. There are different ones here. You have Nvidia noise, etc. These are because I have an Nvidia GPU in here, right? But that doesn't mean you should use them every time. They do use GPU usage. And I would encourage you maybe to shy away from them, especially if you don't have a very top end system because they do use system resources. So what you should probably do is go more towards this RN noise. I kind of like this one. And if you have a lower system, maybe even speaks this one right here. But RN noise works pretty well. And if I stop talking, it does a good job of cutting out that sound. I actually have laundry running right now in the background. All right, next step, you can choose a noise gate. Uh, noise gates are really nice. You can actually put this before the suppressor, especially if you have a consistent sound in your room. This is where, based upon decibels in your room, you want your microphone to actually open up. So let's say somewhere around 40 decibels, negative 40, is around your noise floor. That means you have some kind of fan in your room going, whatever the case, but you want that consistently to not be there. You would just adjust this close threshold and open threshold until your sound is always going to be off until you speak. And right now, these are basic settings, and this is probably going to be just fine for most people. But if you need to adjust them, keep them within about 6 or 5 dB of each other, whichever way you move them. So if I stop talking... There is zero sound coming in. That's because of the noise gate. And again, you can put this before or after. Many people will argue about which one you should use, whether you should remove the sound before you gate or if you should gate before you remove the sound. My opinion, remove the sound and then gate. All right, the next one we're going to do is actually do our equalizer. Now, some, some, I think OBS, if you're updated to the latest one, includes an equalizer. Otherwise, you're going to need to download a plugin. I don't think Streamlabs Desktop has one. So I don't know if we're going to go too far into an equalizer. But if you want to know what these are, these VST plugins where you can actually click, click on these, these are called Reaper plugins. If you want a dedicated video about Reaper plugins and how to use them, let me know. This one has a a really good EQ. If you go ahead and look at this, all of these fine adjustments to your EQ is really nice, but you need to learn if, you know, this could be a whole video in itself. Let me know if you want to see that. Comment below. So in, even though it has a equalizer in here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually listening actively. I'm going to pull the mids out just a little bit to give me a little bit more of a rounded sound. We're going to boost the highs ever so slightly and boost the lows ever so slightly. Those of you who ever actually mess with your car radio probably have done a similar EQ to this where you drop the mids, boost the highs and boost the lows. It gives you presence with just that top part, that nice S sound, that clarity but then also gives you some boomy part of your voice with the lows while removing these harsh mids. Ooh, I just blew the mic out. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> it lets you remove kind of those harsh mids. Uh, so we'll just pull those out a little bit. Depending on your voice, if you're a high voice or a low voice, you would adjust these. Just listen to your head, your headset. Do maybe do a test recording and see what it sounds like and adjust them as they go. Regardless of equalizer, this is the next step. We're actually going to add a compressor. This is the same compressor we use from step one and actually tip one, but we're going to use it for the actual compressor part, not the ducking sidechain piece. For ratio, it's a really good rule of thumb for a voice to put it at four. And there's a whole bunch of reasons again, whatever the case, just go ahead and put your ratio at four. And we're going to talk about attack release, leave those the same. Those are just fine. And then threshold, you're going to adjust this to how much effect you want this to have on your voice. Now you're gonna see that my voice has gotten really soft. So we'll use some output game to push back up into that area. So what is a compressor? A compressor as mentioned before, takes those really loud sounds where you might get 
crazy excited in game or where you just kind of have a loud moment that will take the really highs and will take the really softs where I'm like whispering into the microphone right now. I'm whispering right now and it's going to take those, mush them together volume wise. And so that's why things get really quiet and you have to use this output gain. It's usually called makeup gain and you're going to increase that till it gets back to a usable level. So if I had put this at zero, you can see how much quieter I am. I'm at like negative 15. But if I had pulled that threshold, which is about the effectiveness of it, if I didn't put that much in there, I'm back up to where it was. So I want to lower this to where I get enough effect. And you'll have to play again, it's based upon your microphone. But the threshold's kind of the piece that you're going to play with. And then you're going to push your output gain back up to where it's a usable level. And then you're good. Now you can kind of whisper and people still be able to hear you, but it still sounds like a whisper. And you can also be really loud to the microphone and be very, very loud like I just did. And it's not going to peak. Really good option here. That's a compressor. It compresses the width of your sound. Next is actually a limiter. And you might think, what is a limiter? This is to actually make sure that if you don't accidentally go really high and really hot with your voice and reach zero. Once you reach zero, that's where you actually peak and you start clipping. And when you clip, that's where it's that sound in the microphone. By putting it at like negative two or even negative three, that's the highest your volume will ever get. And because of that, it'll always prevent you from clipping. I personally run a limiter on every single channel. Even if it's at negative one, just before peak and clip, just so it's there, just as a, a precaution, whatever the case. So a good rule of thumb, always run a limiter. Do it. All right, so that was a lot, but let's just go ahead and recap everything that we just mentioned. One, we use a noise suppressor to just pull out any of the sound that might be in the room, like you know, keyboard taps, if you have blue switches or clicks on your mouse. This is a really good way to kind of help mitigate those, especially if you don't have a dynamic microphone like this right in your mouth. Really good way. Headset mic. This is a good way to help. Noise gate will remove any sound below a certain point. The equalizer will help you kind of level your voice out. Maybe you boost some of the bases, take out some of the mids that are kind of harsh, give you some presence up top. I think OBS is the only one with a built-in equalizer so just be aware that that's the case and if you're using an older version of obs it's not even built in you'll have to use plugins like vst plugins like the reaper plugins you'll have to install those then you need to use a compressor kind of push your voice together and then also a limiter to be able to make sure you don't clip now you might be asking yourself the question where should i be using all of these only on my microphone or should i use them everywhere the truth is Whatever works for you, and that sounds so crazy, but let's say you're playing a game like Rainbow Six Siege or Valorant, where you want the quiet sounds to also be heard by your audience, you can also put a compressor on it so they can hear the footsteps and they can hear the little small things that you barely hear because of your nice headphones. You can make a compressor onto it so they can hear clear as day what's happening. Limiters are always great for everything. And even for music, you can actually do something pretty unique that not many people talk about. Let me show you this. This is your bonus tip if you got this far. <gasps> Oh, it's going to make your stream sound so much clearer. So for music, here is a bonus tip that not many people are going to tell you about. You've already done this side chain ducking piece and kind of pulled all the volume down to match your voice, right? We've already talked about the compressor. Uh, something you can do, music's still playing in the background, by the way. You can actually add an EQ. So why are we adding an EQ that pulls the mids out and messes up the EQ of the soundtrack? Uh, simple. Your voice dominates the middle of the spectrum. And because it dominates the middle of the spectrum, any other sounds that are happening in that same voice, in that volume area, the hertz, there's so many terms and I'm trying not to get like crazy deep, but the truth is you don't want any other sounds dominating your voice. You've already started pulling the volume down. If you pull some of the mid EQ out, your voice will sound even clearer on stream. And hopefully you can hear that right now, even though it's ducking, like I should sound clearer compared to what it was beforehand. 
that's subjective. Some people might say something else, but in practice, even in my videos that I edit, I always pull the mids out of my background music so that I'm clear. Any kind of spoken voice is clear in the video. If you want to see more videos on how I show you how to improve your stream, check out the playlist. I'll put it on one of these two sides. I got videos everywhere throughout them. I'm sure you can find something to continue leveling up your stream today. Get to your dream of being a creator full-time. We'll see you over there.